Hi, Model Chili here, and this is update number 8 of my Tamiya USS Enterprise build. And it'll also be the last update video because it is done. After months of work, many, many dollars spent, hours of fiddling about with small parts and painting, it's finally complete. Stand's been done, everything's glued to the deck, photo which figures are on. So we'll have the final seal coats and it's all ready for um, a custom display box that I'm getting made which should be ready in the next day or two. But as, the, uh, as far as the model goes it's um, yeah there's nothing left to be done. So it's uh, quite a relief to have it finally done. It's what's kind of dragging along over, over summer, um, over Christmas and uh, it's just um, Really, really nice just to finally have it done and complete. And um, and yeah, so where to start? It's um, got certainly a lot more work than I was expecting when I bought this kit. Um, I've never really built any model of this size or complexity before. Now you may have seen my video on the, of the Starship Enterprise that's the same scale. That was previously my biggest project that I've ever done. But it was a lot simpler, um, far less parts and bits to fiddle with, but yeah, so I um, wasn't quite sure what I was getting myself into when I started, but I um, got myself through it, and I'm fairly happy with the result. Um, so yeah, I'm not a traditional shipbuilder, and anyone out there who's, um, who's spent many years building ships will no doubt see a lot of inaccuracies or glaring faults but it's um yeah it, it was the best job that I could do with the tools and experience that I've got and the sort of money I was willing to spend to make it all accurate as I could possibly could so um so that's the result and the kit itself the base kit was fairly simple, no major problems with it. It's a 30 year old kit, but um, I'm pretty sure the uh, it's been moulded, remoulded recently. I mean, as Tamiya goes, no problems with the kit, everything fit pretty nicely. No flash, no warping or anything. And uh, the only criticism I have is just that it was so basic, I mean, just the, the amount of extra things that I had to purchase and scratch build to bring it up to this level of detail. I probably spent as much as the kit over again in tools and supplies just to get it looking like this. I mean, we've got the resin uh, phalanx guns, all the extra trumpeter planes, you know, photo etch figures, all the photo etch details for the handrails and radars, etc. The extra decals on the front there, and yeah, I think that's about it. I could have also gone done the extra step in getting resin vehicles for the deck. I've seen. Um, I could have gone and scratch built some hull parts to make the the ship more up to date, and uh, I could have got photo etch, extra photo etch parts for the planes and extra decals for the planes. I mean, the list goes on. I can see why some people spend years building models like this, but uh, I wouldn't say I was in a rush to get this done, but I certainly didn't want to spend too long building it. So uh, maybe next time I'll uh, put a bit more time and effort into a ship this scale. But that won't be for a while, I think um, <laughs> that this will do me for now. And we're really looking forward to getting back onto smaller, more simple kits. But yeah, so um, I hope you like what you see. As, um, as I mentioned in other videos, not all the, the paints and the weathering that I've done on it. There's not really not much more to say about that. When I actually finished the hull quite a while ago, apart from a few extra details. And the stand was just painted in a uh, Tamiya spray can copper. I just gave a bit of a wash for the plaque there. 
and the planes. Some of these were really tricky, especially the painting the canopies. So um, that'll look okay from a distance, but close up, I'm starting to look a bit, bit uh, a bit basic, but gets the message across, I guess. And the detail on the Hawkeyes, I've purposely decided to keep it rather simple, rather than try to add extra paint and lines and all that and mess it up. I mean, that goes for pretty much all the planes, they're fairly simple. I just didn't want to overdo it and screw something up. And the Fredo etched figures were a real pain in the backside to try and stick onto the deck. It's basically, how do you stick what's basically a two-dimensional object and make it stand upright without creating a huge mess in the process? I started out trying PVA glue, but that just wasn't sticking fast enough, so I went to super glue. And there was a couple of accidents, but mostly um, with a lot of patience, I, uh, I managed to get them all up there. And yeah, I didn't use as many as I as I had. I had two sheets of Fedwich figures totaling about 160 men and women, but um. Yeah, the deck started to, was starting to look a bit crowded, so it was pretty much just one sheet and a little bit of the extra sheet, so there's probably about, about 100 crew figures on there. Some of them are obvious, some of them are not so obvious, like a little in-joke I've got on here, this extra part sticking out the side, I've got a crew member sort of walking the plank. Um, yeah, the, a few other extra crew figures just since sort of hiding places. So yeah, so um, they all went together fairly well. And as I said, I've got a display box coming, being made at the moment, so, which I thought was pretty essential for something like this. I mean, it's going to be impossible to keep dust free without some sort of cover. And the box wasn't cheap, so I've almost spent it was almost the price of the kit to be honest, but it's just one of those things that I decided that I had to do. And uh, I'll just pause this and uh, swing it around so you can see the other side. So, taking a look at the starboard side, we've got um, a few extra bits and pieces next to the island. So, in between the crane and the island, I've got um, sort of scratch built skips and bits of equipment. There was just extra um, parts, like sprue parts from old tanks and stuff. And there's also another skip around the, the front there, which you can see someone throwing something into. And other additions were just a little bit of a few extra details on the back of the fire trucks there. Added a very thin cable to the, uh, the crane. And. Some of the extra details since the last update were um, these decals along the side of the elevators there. And as far as the stand goes, I've uh, attached the, the ship to the stands just with a couple of screws you can see under there. So that just makes the whole thing really solid. And it also lets me um, be able to take it off when, if I need to. And speaking of attachments, the um, I mentioned the figures were super glued on, but all the planes are just stuck with PVA. So while they won't come off if you shake or move the ship, you know, a slight tap and they'll come off. So just in case I decide to, or I really want to move the planes around or take some off and add some different ones in the future, then they'll come off without any fuss. I just hope they, um, they stay there when the, uh, the next earthquake comes, but... Who knows? And yeah, so as I said, I'm overall I'm fairly happy with the result. I mean, could it be better? Sure. I mean, I could have spent more money, more time perfecting everything, but I decided to uh, reach a sort of compromise of time versus effort. 
and it just uh, just feels really good to have it done. Now I can move on to the next project. Um, I tried to, I've tried to keep it as accurate as possible. Um, someone, I'm sorry, I'll forget your name, but in one of my previous videos, someone left a comment that the Hornets and the Corsairs weren't on the deck at the same time in the same air wing, so I've had to take off the the, uh, the uh, Corsairs, sorry. And I'm sure there's other inaccuracies historical on the on the ship, but for someone like me who's just got a sort of a a general knowledge of naval history. It doesn't really bother me too much. I just kind of wanted to get a look in the feel of the Enterprise. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. And yeah, so... If you have any questions about how I made the kit or what tools I've used, you know, feel free to leave a comment. I'd be more than happy to answer. Share any tips I've learnt building this kit. Yeah, so um, I hope that's been informative, if not entertaining. <laughs> and uh, let me know what you think. So uh, until next time, take care.